I did disassemble this fan a uh, couple reasons. Number one, I want the impeller, most importantly, to try and experiment. Secondly, it's a 24 volt fan, so it's not as useful. While I do have the power supply for a 24 volt power supply for the scanner, and this device should have a 24 volt power supply, it isn't as easy as the 12 volts that I normally get from a computer power supply, so it's not as useful to me. Um, theory here is that I've taken all the stick on the back. Theory here is if I pound that bearing, I should be able to get it out. It's an interesting theory. I may end up destroying the bearing. Hopefully not. I do not remember how these things are put together, but uh, the shaft has come out on the other side through the impeller. And theoretically, the whole, I don't know, the board is tied. It probably is because there's a magnet internal here so maybe the board is tied um, maybe it isn't and uh, maybe I can squeeze this out the other approach is try to pump this out this way and see if the shaft will go through the um, bearing that is a possibility I could try that first actually tap on this side and see if the shaft will go through and come out on this side here for the bearing. and if that happens well everything comes out easily if not well we try tapping from this side uh, possibly tap the whole bearing body with a socket and see if that works. From the bearing side behind here, didn't work. Knocking from this side on the top, did. As you can see, I end up with a square hole using a nail, so that didn't really help, but I can still get back to center with this. As you can see, ceramic type magnet in here with a line on it. I do not think it's supposed to have that line. So yeah, that's probably me cracking the magnet. It's pretty sure it's not supposed to have a line there. Anyway, ceramic magnet. Uh, this is just the four coils. Uh, what I'm gonna do is pop all this and see if I look at the circuitry. Shouldn't be too complicated, but yeah. Four coils, um, poles, poles, opposing. Most likely a hot effect sensor somewhere along the line and that will tell which one to switch to. Let's have a look at the circuitry. Wondering if I damage this, but if you look at the shaft, there's a lip there, it's a little silk clip, and the bearing was meant to actually stay there. And then the top bearing here, which is on this thing side, fits in, so no damage at all. Rough on the edge, again for gripping on the plastic, so came out perfectly. It didn't want to come out peacefully, uh, this was press fit in, and yeah, no amount of leveraging against the board was working. So we use persuasion by drill. Yeah, a bit of just straight drill bit and drill it all out. It's not gonna work um, with all that knocking. I have damaged the coil. The wires are now coming out extremely fine wires already. Uh, it was supposed to be happen. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is just try to get this circuit all drawn up and understand exactly what it did. We can clearly see the number. So it doesn't look like the most complicated. It looks like this chip does everything. It's a matter of getting the circuit for the ship, and I think everything will fall into place. May not even have to do the um, circuit diagram, because the chip may actually describe how it should be used. So, let's see if we can get a hold of that. This is a closer view of the board. From there, we can see the chip number being LB1868. Going now to the spec sheet, which is fairly easy to find. It clearly shows it's a two-phase brushless fan motor driver. So pretty much does everything. It does work between 12 volts and 24 volts. Again, this was a 24 volt fan, so yeah, it makes sense. And it requires a direct hole element. We saw that on the board. Um, so yeah, not much else. I'll put a link below. After some further investigation, it turns out I didn't actually break this. This little notch that you're seeing here is actually where it's joined. This is not a ceramic magnet like I first thought. It's actually a rubberized magnet, similar to what you have in a fridge door. If I squeeze it, you can see the dents, which you could never do with a ceramic magnet. Interestingly, they don't try to use something a little bit more powerful. I would think, you know, I don't know, maybe a Neolia magnet, maybe even a proper ceramic magnet, you know, in the correct shape, uh, glued on. Who knows why it's done this way?